passed by hundreds of students every day. Sitting in a box at the end of a hallway in a university building in London is the corpse of one of the most important philosophers in modern history. Jeremy Bentham was a philosopher. He's considered the, the father of utilitarianism, the notion that you want to do the most good for the largest number of people. He was also a man well ahead of his time. While women were still being persecuted for witchcraft in other parts of Europe, Jeremy Bentham was espousing things like gay rights, the end of slavery, the end of child labor, animal rights. He was a guy who was forward thinking, and when it came time for his death, he didn't want to be buried. He wanted to be made into an auto icon. Jeremy Bentham wrote his will when he was 21, and he already knew what he wanted to happen when he died. His body was given to his friend to dissect so that he might learn something from it. He then also wanted to be made into a corpse that he thought maybe his friends would come and visit that could be taken out at parties. Uh, and he did this for a number of reasons. One, he didn't have a real high view of the church. And in some ways, this was a way of kind of thumbing his nose at the religious traditions. Second, as a utilitarian, he genuinely thought, what is the most value that my dead body could possibly have? And finally, he was just funny. He was just a funny guy who probably thought that this was hilarious. These are the reasons he decided he wanted himself made into a auto icon. In fact, he used to uh, carry around a set of glass eyes that he wanted put into his auto icon, and he would bring them to parties, and he'd pull them out and sort of use them as a, a conversation piece and, and as a way of, of shocking some of the more proper people at the party. The same friend who dissected him also did the mummification of his head. He did so using uh, a Maori style of mummification that involves sort of stretching and heating and I think using hot sulfur. But it looked pretty bad. With sunken cheeks, the skin is sort of tight over the skull. It's not a super great look. Of course, they still, you know, dutifully like popped those glass eyes in there. Here's the solution. I'm gonna have a beautiful wax head made for him. Uh, it's gonna look just like him. It's gonna be nice and fleshy faced like he was in life. For a long time, he sat there serene wax head, real head, down beneath his feet, ghoulishly looking out with these like very bright glass eyes. However, in the 70s, some students managed to just extract the head, the real head, which they then ransomed to the college, asking for a hundred pounds given to a charity. The university said we'll give 10 pounds to the charity, and the students uh, dutifully returned the head. After this prank, they decided to keep it somewhere safer than between the feet of Bentham. So it is now in a Victorian bell jar, in a box that takes four keys and two people to open, and no one's gonna open it for you. That said, uh, Bentham's auto icon, it does get around. He was taken out for the 150th anniversary of the college, and he recently attended the retirement of a particularly long-serving uh, provost. And when they had to take him to a conservator uh, in another part of London, they just put him in a car. They just drove him there in the passenger seat Weekend at Bernie's style. Uh, there are some other stories of pranks that have happened. One of the most famous is that his head was then stolen and used in a football game. This is a, is a total myth for no other reason than basically his real head could never have survived. Some uh, students did steal the wax head in the 90s and take some pictures of themselves hanging out with it. As a utilitarian, I think Bentham asked himself, what good can my corpse do? And having had it dissected, having had it uh, appear at various functions, having it serve as just an amusing backdrop for the students of University College London, I think you can't get a whole lot more utility out of a dead body than that. Than them. So there's a particularly weird uh, Twitter stream uh, related to Jeremy Bentham that you should follow. There's a little camera hooked up which takes a, a picture every hour or so and sends a stream of basically what uh, Jeremy Bentham sees. It's like the Jeremy Bentham cam. It's strangely hypnotic and I highly suggest you follow at Panopticon stream uh, and you know, see through the, through the eyes of Bentham himself.